Hello and welcome to Mailbox, the non show filtered whiskey blog. I'm Andy and this is whiskey review number 55. What I have for you today is a Highland single malt scotch whiskey from the Balblair distillery, way up in the Northern Highlands. It looks like this. And this is the Balblair 1999 vintage. Um, I opened this recently because I had a bit of uh, good news and uh, I've been drinking it over the last week or so. Um, basically I then, I tend to do this, I, I put a poll on Twitter with a couple of options uh, as to what you'd like me to review next. This was one of those options and sure enough it won. Here's the bottle, so you can see that. Really really nice uh, glassware there. They do make it look nice, presentation is great. Now, that'll blare. Oh, what a noise. As I mentioned, it's a Highland distillery. It's not quite as good when it pops, but when it goes back into it's another good noise as well. Um, it's owned by Inverhouse Distillers, who also own the Knockdo Distillery, who bottle their whiskey as Anok, so as not to be confused with Knockando. Um, and uh, Old Putney Distillery. So uh, they own that little trio of uh, really great little distilleries. Uh, the distillery itself was founded in 1790. It's one of the very few distilleries to actually be founded in the 1700s officially, and there's actually records that go back to them, which is phenomenal. It's really, really old. Um, the whiskey itself, the 1999, was brought in to replace the discontinued 1997, which was a fantastic drum. Really, 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 really good. Um, I mean, you've, you've probably noticed by now, I keep saying 99, 1999 vintage, 1997 vintage, um, and that's because Balblair are one of the few companies who actually bottle their whiskies to a vintage rather than an actual age statement. So instead of 12 years old, 15 years old, or whatever, they actually have the vintage, which is quite a nice change. Uh, the 1999, this particular version is the second edition, so the second release of this, uh, this uh, bottling uh, was actually bottled in 2016, so it's basically going to be between a 16 year old and a 17 year old, depending on when in the year uh, it was bottled and still accordingly. So, the whiskey itself distilled, uh, sorry, bottled, should I say, at 46%, it is natural colour and it is non chill filtered. Yes, get in, it's another one. So Nice light golden colour there, I'm not going to give it a daft name because it's natural colour. It's only the ones that lie that do. So there you go. That's the new rule. Make a mockery of me, I make a mockery of your colour. Some nice legs on the glass. On the nose. A little bit prickly initially. Let's blow that out. Really, really nice sort of signature Balblair baked apple note and apple pie. There's vanilla in there. It's also quite spicy. Open a spice cupboard. It's not just one in particular. It's just a nice big hit of spices. Um, there's also something in there that I would sort of put towards a cherry or plum jam. Quite a tart jam. Honey, citrus, sort of sugary barley, quite a creamy, vanilla-y, custardy uh, note in there as well. It's actually quite light, but at the same time, it's quite rich. You know, the flavours are very intense, but it's not your very um, heavily sherried kind of flavours, you know what I mean? It's, it's not just like all Christmas cake, all salt raisins, all this, all that. It's really quite delicate. The cask makeup is partially ex sherry and ex bourbon, so it's a mixture of ex bourbon and ex sherry. Um, so, you know, you do get a nice mix of uh, sort of like flavours in there and notes. As I say, it is chill filter, it's non chill filtered, sorry, and it is natural colour. Mix that up, plum and neck. It's 
There's also a little bit of boiled sweets or Werther's Originals and fruits, fruity sweets. Sort of like you get at the tuck shop when you're at school. Hmm, very, very good start indeed. This whiskey retails for around £60, uh, between 60 to 65 quid. You can get it online at the usual suspects, uh, the Whiskey Exchange, Master of Malt, etc. So it is quite widely available. Uh, I've had mine on the shelf for about a year. I actually bought it, not just shy of a year, I bought it in May last year and it's been sat untouched until now. As I say, I've had some pretty decent news, so I've decided to crack it open. Now, Belle Blair, as a distillery, uh, we mentioned in the Glenmorangie Bacalta review that their stills are quite tall. They're actually some of the tallest stills in Scotland. Belle Blairs are actually quite, how can I say, it? squat. They're quite small, quite dumpy. Um, but uh, they do add some really nice sort of signature characteristics to it. A lot of Belle Blair you'll find does carry that apple note. It does carry vanilla. It does kind of carry really nice creaminess to it. The box itself, nice presentation. You know, it's not your standard pull up, it's good for a treat with this. You know, magnetic closures, people, magnetic. Look at that. Oh, well, close enough, close enough. So, oh yeah, so much apple going back in there now. Right, onto the uh, palette now. Again, it's spicy. Again, the vanilla. Again, you've got that baked apple tart, apple pie, however you want to say it. You've now got vanilla ice cream. You've got chocolate ice cream. And you know what? There's a lot more sherry influence on the palate than there was on the nose. We are getting a little bit of that Christmas cake. We are getting chocolate. We are getting sort of like brandy salt raisins and cranberries. There's also a little bit of orange juice, orange zest. There's that spice in there again, think cloves, think cinnamon. It really is a drama for two hours. Finish, warm, quite long, sweet, spicy, very enjoyable. In terms of mouthfeel, it's actually a little thinner than I thought it'd be. Initially when you put it in and you get it on your gums, you think it's going to really coat it and be quite oily, but the texture is actually quite thin, which is a little disappointing, because normally Belle is a nice big thick gloopy spirit, which I really, I really like that sort of thing, because it's all about, not just about flavour and you know smells and, and various other things and how it looks, it's also about the texture, because at the end of the day you're eating it, aren't you? you you're eating it, you're drinking it. You want that is another dimension to the whole experience. So, as I say, there's a lot more sherry influence on the palate, I think. There is still the bourbon influence in there as well. So you've still got that vanilla in there. You've still got that nice honeyed sweetness as well. It's really, really good. Very, very well balanced, I think. That's the key. It's not overpowering in any sense of the word. The finish is still going, but what I'm getting between that sort of transition into the finish was a Victoria sponge with classic royal icing which is quite you know, sweet and it's got a very unique flavour to it so what I'm going to do very quickly is just put a teaspoon of water in there maybe a little bit less So, as I say, you can find it quite widely. Um, you know, spirit retailers. Um, I've not actually seen it on the high street, to be honest with you. I do believe shops like the whiskey shop sell it. Uh, but let's be honest, it'll probably be about 40 quid more than it should be uh, in that particular establishment. Um, the presentation is really nice, I've got to be honest with you. I've also got the, the 1990, which a few of you have commented and asked me to review, and I will be doing. Uh, just not yet. So let's grab that without dropping it, shall we? Oh, there we go. Close call. So as you can see, there's the 90. A hell of a lot darker. A hell of a lot more shadowy influence on that. 
pop that back. Ugh. I've also got a Gordon McPhail um, X bourbon, I think it might be, or it might be a refill sherry actually from memory. Um, Ten year old Balblair, which is uh, also going to get reviewed at some point. Really nice little drop. And uh, the distillery is quite small. Uh, the capacity is around 1.8 million litres a year, I believe. Between 1.6 and 1.8, anyway, from memory. Um, it was actually used in a bit of the Angel Share film. So, uh, if you've seen it, it's the bit where they pitch a tent and they're on that hill overlooking a distillery. That's Balbler. If you've not seen that film, I really, really do suggest you watch it. It's fantastic stuff. Directed by Ken Loach. Really good director. Really good film. Honestly, give it a watch. Give it a watch if you haven't. So, the water's been in there for a little while now. Let's see what difference that's made. There's lemon in there. There's vanilla. Still a nice little spicy hit to it as well. It's actually a little bit prickly on the nose now. Mm. Okay. It's definitely better with water, I'll be honest. That Victoria sponge note is actually a lot more prominent with water, come to think of it. Um, again with the vanilla, again with the apple, again with the, the chocolate in there as well. Uh, so really nice sort of like um, milky chocolate. Finish, S you know, it's still quite quite a decent length, still warming, quite sweet. Um, but I'll be honest with you, it didn't need water. This is one of those drums that you can just sit back and enjoy and pick apart. For me, uh, the nose is a little bit more engaging than the palate. Um, I think it's a really, really good testing drum as well, as well as being very good quality. Uh, in terms of score, I'm going to give this whiskey an 87 out of 100. And what I'm actually going to start doing, and this is going to be the first review that I do, is I'm going to tell you what that breakdown is. Instead of just saying a random number, I'm going to tell you how I got to that number. And here's my piece of paper with the breakdown. So, it's kind of your, uh, your traditional four-way split. So I've got 25 points for each category, each of the following categories. We've got so you know nose, I've got palate, finish, and then I've got another one at the end, which I'm going to rename it. But at the minute I've just written overrider. All right. Basically, what I'm categorising that as is presentation, price, and when I say presentation, I don't just mean that it comes in a fancy box. I mean colour, chill filtration, strength. And yeah, okay, taking into account this as well, the presentation itself, and, uh, and I'll say price. So my breakdown of this 87, out of 25 I gave the nose 23, out of 25 I gave the palette 22, for the finish I gave 20 out of the 25, and for my overrider, I really need to rename that. Comment on the video if you've got any ideas for a name that is better than that. Um, for, the, for that, anyway, I've given it 22 out of 25, taking that to your 87 out of 100. I hope my maths is right, because if not, then I'm going to seem like a rat prat. Um, so, anyway, that's it. If you like the, the breakdown, please do let me know. If you'd just rather just have the score, fine, I will keep it like that. I'm, I'm trying to mix things up a little bit. Um, but that aside, thanks for watching. See you soon.